Hey y'all, it's your girl Key. What is up, Chuck Peeps? It is Bree, y'all. We are back in the room. What's up? How are you, Bree? I'm you know what, girl? I've been good. I'm getting a break from traveling like every weekend this month, and I can't tell you how excited I am to be home. I feel like I said that last show too. <laughs> well, I'm excited for you to be home, and I'm not even gonna start no mess today with you because I'm so excited for you to be home. If y'all could have seen the side eye she just gave me on the screen. <laughs> okay, y'all, we're gonna we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on. So, y'all, our topic today, we're talking about. Well, no, you know what? I'm gonna go into the story and then I'm gonna talk about the topic. So many dating apps, right? So my friend was like, you know, I want to get on a dating app. I want to get back out there, and this is huge for her. Okay, because she was anti dating apps for a minute, so she got back on Hinge and she met this guy. And it was going great. Like they had a great conversation. I want to say, she said they talked for like maybe a couple of days. We'll say like two, three days back to back, like long conversations past being on the app, like exchange numbers. We talk on the phone, we text them, FaceTime, all of that is what she was telling me. So then she's like, okay, we decided to meet up. So they met like at a local hookah bar or something. Right, right. First time meeting in person, face to face. She said it was great, great chemistry, good conversation. So the next day they had a date. I want to say he might have like washed her car or something or they went to the gym and worked out together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to say they even went out to eat. So like in the span of like two or three days, they had like two or three dates, which in my mind, I would think this could predict you know, success or like active dating between two people. Girl, she said, so they went on the two, three dates or whatnot, back to back. And then they still had good conversation. And they was talking about different things after this happened. She was like, but then he got real distant and he wasn't texting back as fast. He wasn't responding to phone calls. And she said one day she didn't hear from him at all. And I was like, what you mean? Like what happened? Or like y'all to have these dates, great conversation, the vibes going at the hookah bar, like how? What happened? She was like, girl, I don't know. So she said like it was a Sunday. She checked in to make sure he was alive because she hadn't heard from him and he hadn't responded. And she, he said, yeah, I'm good. Excuse me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You've been seeing my calls, my text messages, and yeah, I'm good. That's all I get. So she was like, okay, I'm glad you're alive. How you been? Never responded. She said she ain't never heard from him no more. Uh huh. With Casper, we're gonna go and call him Casper. Yes, Casper, where you at? Ghosting the great phenomenon of ghosting, girl. It's terrible, and it's not even new, right? Like, I, I used to think we the word, the term is new, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's not new. And I'm about to say something, I know you're gonna look at me crazy, but I feel like the original ghosting before we get into her story is like those old stories where people be like. Daddy went to get cigarettes and didn't come back. Like, that's ghosting still. <laughs> I'm being real, though. That's <laughs> ghosting because you just didn't have a way to track that person. Mm -hmm. So they really mm -hmm. would be in a whole other city with a whole new family. And, like, but that's just so ghosting is not really new. It has become modernized, right? Mm. But I have so many issues with everything you just said to me about their interaction. Break them down. Um, and I just like you ain't got no balls. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm gonna say it because you didn't have the balls to say you didn't want to talk to her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that that speaks a lot more. And maybe I'm going too deep on it. I just feel like that speaks more to your character than anything else. Because how much does it take to say I'm not interested? I didn't say it was gonna feel good to the other person what you said, mm -hmm. but. If you think that saying nothing does more than saying something, I just question like how you process it. Not that it's right, wrong, or indifferent, but what is this? I would love to sit down with Casper and ask all the questions. And I really feel like I wish I could have called somebody to come on today that ghost people. I know some people that have ghosted people. I have been ghosted in the middle, but then they came back still talking. But I have been ghosted before. Um, so I get it. You have to assume you have that much power in, right. or that much impact on somebody. Sometimes mm -hmm. you do, sometimes you don't. Sometimes people are good at pretending. 
sometimes the conversation is good. I've talked to plenty of guys where the conversation is great, but I don't want them. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't want them. Like, I really be like, this would never work as a relationship, but we can talk. This is cool. So if you was just like, I'm not into you, I'm like, okay. <laughs> Why That's a good point. That? Because I'm in my thoughts right now. That's yeah. a good point. I like the egotistical part. Now, we kind of touched on that before, that believing like the things you say are going to impact people a certain way when really you don't know or not giving people enough credit, right, for, for their own stuff and how they show up. So that's fair. And, you know, I, I'm thinking about there's this person I follow on Instagram and, I mean, she engaged back to be married now and all this stuff. But when she was actively dating, she would share like her experiences with like going out with different guys and whatnot. And being able to openly communicate when you want to cut this tie and not bring in that same energy that I'm okay with things being, like you said, left undone or not fully being closed. So she shared one time how she exchanged um, a text message with a guy saying like, hey, I'm no longer interested in us, you know, going on dates or communicating because you're pretty inconsistent. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was, and when I read that, I was like, wow. Now, I think he just like thumbs up it. He didn't say nothing back. <laughs> but like, like it can be just that. It can be. It can absolutely be because I think the reality is rejection is not always negative. Sometimes right. I don't want, sometimes I'm not interested in you and it has nothing to do with you being a bad person. It has nothing to do with me not being attracted to you. Sometimes it's because I know who I am. And it has nothing to do with you, right? Like, for instance, um, you saying what she said about the inconsistent thing. Mm -hmm. I know I can't, I don't do well with men inconsistent. I had an inconsistent father. I don't need that. I know that if you are inconsistent, even if you cool, we can't work because you're going to create space and an environment that I don't thrive in well. It mm -hmm. does not fit me as a person. It is, um, it is not something that's healthy for me even in the smallest way. So it's like, even if you're a great person, I can know you're not my match because the reality is everybody I talk to can't be my match. That's just the truth. There can be some connections, but there's certain things it's just not going to work. And I feel like you know that sometimes. you We've, we've all probably entertained people for longer than necessary, even mm -hmm. if it's just fun. But in reality, you know it's never going to be this thing yeah it's not going to be the thing that checks all the boxes for your needs and wants in a relationship absolutely yes and absolutely. so i think that knowing that is why it's important it's okay it's okay to just tell somebody i'm uninterested even if i don't feel like it has to be followed by a why necessarily right, right. unless yeah. they ask mm -hmm. but i do feel like i stand by i feel like ghosting is not okay <laughs> it's not okay for a lot of reasons I, I I agree. Right? And I think it might. I guess I'm wondering how many people have been ghosted. Like, at how many times? Because we're still mm -hmm. referring to, like, the modern version of mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. But, like I said, it goes back all this time. There's been plenty of times people have just disappeared. And because there wasn't a cell phone at the way we mm -hmm. used it, because there was no Facebook, no social media, where you can be like, they didn't respond to me, but I seen they did this, this. Yep. There was none of that. So ghosting, I just wonder, like, how many times? And so you said you've been ghosted. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you talked back to the person you that's ghosted you and just mm -hmm. kept going. <laughs> I ain't, nope, ain't heard from him. But, well, I mean, no but. But, yeah, there is a but. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I met the guy. Um, We exchanged numbers. But it was also like one of those, hey, we all hanging out. We didn't really come to meet people, but this just happened because we were supporting another friend. Mm -hmm. And it just happened that way. We exchanged numbers. He might have called me like that night just to say, hey, I want to make sure y'all made it in safely, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Right? And then he said, you know, I'll hit you up tomorrow. Okay, cool. Tomorrow came. I didn't hear from him. The next day, I was like, you know, I'm going to text him and say, what's up? So, girl, I texted him. I was like, hey. I said the same, hey, you, <laughs> how's your day going? Are you having a good week so far? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it was like a Tuesday or something. And no response. 
nothing. Hey, great conversation. Told me his life story while we was hanging out mm-hmm. the previous weekend. And and maybe that's just maybe that's just a thing that you do, right? Like you meet a passenger on a plane and you tell them shit that you might not normally tell other people, but because you'll probably never ever see this person again, mm-hmm. I'm gonna just lay it all out, right? So mm-hmm. after I thought back over it and when I told him I was a therapist, that could have been that that like ignited the fire like oh let me tell her all my life right mm-hmm. it could have been that but i was like who who shares all of that and then like discontinues connection and then i thought about the plane and how i've talked to people on the plane about things that i might not tell a friend that i've had for several years and it's fine because i'll never see you again on this flight to chicago never again Fair. did you i did not oh. internalize the ghost thing, right? And I think that's what happens sometimes. Because it was like, it was late at night, we was all hanging out, there was drinks involved, which is fine. And it is what it is, this this type of stuff happens. Right, and so for that, that situation was more like, you based it off like how we met. So there's right. not even like a pattern of us connecting. Exactly. So, it's a little, so of course, so we'll call it early ghosting, most Ooh, people yeah. probably don't care. Yeah. People don't probably care if that initial is, I think once people have because everybody um, feels attached and gets connected to people at different levels. Yeah. So I feel like once people have had, feel like they have made a connection, now we really talking about some ghosting, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I remember being ghosted and I was so confused, right? I was really confused. And I'm gonna tell you why I'm like confused. The two people who have ghosted me, I'm gonna tell you it's been the same pattern. It goes like this. They'll talk to me, I'm talking to them. It's mm-hmm. cool. They will at some point say something that's like, I think one the first dude he was like, we gonna be more than friends, like I, way more into this than I am, cause I'm I call bullshit on everybody, right? So I'm like, yeah, whatever. The other dude, same thing. So it starts off that way. So then we talk, 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 and then when I do decide to, not like I'm leading them on, but once we are mutually, you are blinded by the sun. Um, well, mutually, we early. We don't. He disappeared and then texts me on my birthday. Uh-uh. I was in the club and I will never forget because I said okay so anybody who knows me in real life in real life you know, I'm done. <laughs> oh I'm done when I say there's no thread there's no nothing you're numbered like you're not here you do not exist so when this 10 digits popped up and it was a certain area code and he the only person I talked to in the area code I was like ain't no you're way new. open this message time but happy birthday and I just was like are you I text back that are you fucking serious because who ghosts somebody and then text them on their birthday? Who told you they're going to ego to me? Who told mm-hmm. you I won't talk to you on my birthday? And oh, they yeah. said, I apologize if I ruined your day, your night. Now that, that's ego. How do you think? Let me tell you something. I was young and let's just say that thing right there, that lasted with us for five years. <laughs> just five years, never in a relationship. Five Friend. years. Friend. Five years Friend. of wow, of wowness. Friends, yes. five years, five years. I don't even know how, and not like it was breaks because then I, mm-hmm. I would just be like, I would send a message and say, I'm not talking to you anymore, though, right? Yeah, and just stop. But it's just amazing. So it's like, that's why I said when somebody ghosts you, I feel like you're more likely to talk back to them than if somebody flat out said, I don't like you, right? Mm, okay, yeah. So, um, but I, I feel like if you are a as a victim of ghosting, because I've never ghosted anybody, I feel like there is a thin line. So it happened twice. The first time, of course, I internalized it. I was probably mm-hmm. like 21. <laughs> you know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. 22. Yeah. Um, and so I cared about this person. So this was different. Like, that's why I went back and forth like that. I don't know why it was stupid. I make jokes about it today. I will one day tell you about how crazy I am. Um, (laughs) But the other person, it was like, okay. Like, it was more like, why would you do that? But I didn't really Mm -hmm. care at the same time. So I think, obviously, I didn't internalize that one. And so I feel like that is the problem with ghosting. On the other side is people do internalize it. Yeah, they internalize it and then it makes them guess themselves. But I'm just here to say the only issue that you may have is the fact that you may still be reaching out to somebody who, at the very least, they haven't said anything, which is still a problem. Like they have not said they don't like you, but they're acting in a way that makes you feel unsafe, 
un insecure and it does not provide mm -hmm. stability. Therefore, quit putting yourself back in that space with that person. It is better to accept it, go through all the emotions than to continue to try this dance because at, at nothing else, they've shown you a part of their personality or character. And you have to ask yourself, is that something I want? Sure. I have no reason to believe that it's going to be different if you come back. You know what I mean? You don't have a reason to necessarily believe that up front. So I would encourage you to, to dig deep and say, why? Because if you, I know some people still out there reaching somebody that goes to them, probably sending little random yeah. messages like, why? After those first few times, I'll even give you like a few days. Like after that though, especially if you've been consistently talking to somebody and they're not in the hospital and you don't find any of that mm -hmm. type of reach out, mm -hmm. I think you're doing yourself an injustice by continuing to reach out. Yeah. Yeah. That makes me think of um, when I hear people say, don't entertain what you don't want. So I don't want the inconsistency. I don't want someone who's not going to talk to me when things are off or when they don't want something. And like talk to me too. But yeah. Yeah. And for you ghosters, little Caspers, <laughs> I encourage you to talk to yourself. Outside, some people just assholes, like I said, I was. Some people just like, I don't, I don't feel like having this conversation with you and I'm not. And that just, it is Fair. what it is. But on the other side, I also would encourage people who do ghosting to ask yourself, why? Why do I have the nerve to entertain people and risk getting involved with people, but I don't use that same nerve to end it? Where do I lose it and why? And that's mm -hmm. not from a place of judgment. Like, if you may think you're hurting somebody's feelings, but either way, you're hurting somebody's feelings. So I encourage you to dig deeper into what is it that I fear? Is it just conflict? Because I heard when you said confrontation, and I thought that was interesting, and I was like, it's sad because we've reached a level where we can't have a conversation without thinking that if my comment is not what you want to hear, it's going to turn to confrontation. And it doesn't have to, mm -hmm. you know, like it can literally yeah. just be like, you like to go to uh, what's Jimmy's ladder. And I'm like, why do we really? have to go here? Right. Really? And then I'm like, we're, we're going to not a confrontation. It's just like, okay, girl, <laughs> we're just going to eat this because it's what you want anyway. And I really don't have a problem with it. Everything's not a confrontation. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage people to figure out, why if you are a habitual ghoster especially one time sure everybody has probably done it maybe possibly once but to consistently do it i just got one just that mm -hmm. one That's and he cool. and he wasn't a consistent person that i was talking to like it was literally within like a two maybe three weeks span mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. we might have communicated on the phone like three times because I wonder if ghosting leads to other things. Like, there's no studies on it, right, that I've seen. But I just wonder if, like, if I'm a habitual Ooh. ghoster, what does that show up like in relations? How do I navigate mm. conflict? Like, it's a lot. It's deep to me. You can make anything deep, but I'd be wanting to know. I wonder if that, you know what, our next show topic, I wonder if it'll lead into that. Can we we're going to talk about um, stability mm. outside mm. of, like, finances. And how that shows up in other areas. And I can see a link between ghosting and lack thereof stability. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. sometimes ghosting is the easy way out, too. Let's be real. Let's just be real. Sometimes it's the yeah. easy way out. Mm -hmm. Now, That's and sometimes, right. sometimes the person getting ghosted is actually happy you ghosted them. I'm not negating these outliers. Like, because sometimes both people don't have the nerve to be able to say, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. And so... Or that mm -hmm. I don't like you in that way. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes there's a relief. They're like, well, I have had people like not ghost me, but I'm like, why do I keep talking to this person? Like I've had to ask myself that. And so if they were to ghost me, I wouldn't be mad. You know what I mean? Oh my but God. I have that moment of saying, why do I keep doing this to myself? I have one like that. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> oh my God. I was just, as you was talking, like, his name came to mind. I was like, oh, my God, that is totally him. And I can't get the <laughs> meme out my head. I know. Sorry. <laughs> it's terrible. That is a good, that is a good, you know what? I know what it is. But we're talking about it off the mic. <laughs> <laughs> she don't want to share that perfect child. But, so, but even in those moments, if that person was to ghost you, I would you be would okay. be perfectly fine, right? So we know that. The impact of ghosting depends on who is doing it, 
mm-hmm. how long you've been talking to the person mm-hmm. and your perception big on that word your perception yeah. of how it was actually going because i don't know if you've ever been in that situation where i'm a friendly person yeah so sometimes people have mistaken my friendliness for flirting and i'm not Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of like your, that's why I say your perception of how this is going. Cause in my mind, I've talked to people and they probably thought we were talk kicking it and I was just talking trash, like a normal friendly person. And I'm like, I don't plan to talk to you once I get out this chair and go out this door and go home. So, so that's why I say your perception, but I think, yes. So I can't wait to do the next episode to join that together and probably get some guys or maybe i'm gonna see if i know any people that have ghosted and we can see if some of our people in our rolodex have ever ghosted or been ghosted right because i'm a woman so Mm -hmm. i don't know i know a lot of men but i've never had conversation with them about them being ghosted or being a ghost star in particular so i think that is how i'm going to ask the question when i um reach out to this person to see if they want to be on the episode i think i'm just going to say what is it we want to know have they ever been ghosted Yep, have they ever been ghosted or ghosted? And okay, yeah, so have they been ghosted or have they been Casper? Yes, which oh, one yeah. are you? I'm yeah, absolutely, because I'm a ghost buster. <laughs> oh my god, 